So I've been trying to find the best ETFs for income that are not dividend trapped. And I've been focusing on a select few that seem to be buried behind all the noise surrounding popular ETFs. I've talked about covered call ETFs before and why these are extremely popular for income oriented investors. And it's primarily because these ETFs utilize a covered call option strategy that generates extremely high and attractive dividend yields, making it an ideal investment for income oriented investors and a very effective hedge in a downward trending market. And that is because the dividend yield counteracts the drop in stock price, providing amazing protection against downward volatility. You can see that clearly when comparing a covered call ETF like QYLD, which sells covered calls against the NASDAQ 100 index, the QQQ, side by side with the QQQ. During the bear market of 2022, QYLD was able to outperform the QQQ by a staggering 14%. So here's the thing. Majority of the covered call ETFs that I've talked about on this channel either focus on the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. But what about the Dow? This is where things get really interesting. For those who don't know, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, often referred to as simply the Dow, is a stock market index that measures the performance of 30 large publicly traded companies in the United States. The Dow represents a broad range of industries including technology, healthcare, finance, consumer goods, and some of the companies included in the index are Apple, Microsoft, Boeing, Coca-Cola, and Goldman Sachs. The performance of the Dow Jones is often used as an indicator of the overall health and direction of the US stock market, and is closely followed by investors, analysts, and the media. So the question is, is there an ETF that tracks the performance of the Dow and manages to provide similar returns, while also providing an amazing source of income with a dividend yield of around 10%? DJIA. This is the Global X Dow 30 Covered Call ETF. Amongst all the other Global X covered call ETFs, if I were to choose one, it would be this. And here's why. So to begin with, let's start with some fundamentals so you can get a better understanding of this ETF. This ETF was established on February 23rd, 2022, so it is extremely new, and it currently has over $75 million of assets under management, which is quite impressive given its recent inception date. The fund currently has an expense ratio of 0.6%, which is pretty much on par with majority of other covered call ETFs. And just for reference, for every $10,000 invested, you pay $60 in annual fees. And I've mentioned this before, but you do not have to pay for the expense ratio directly. It is a percentage that gets taken out of the fund at the end of every year. So it's always important to focus on ETFs that have the lowest expense ratio. Now, considering the fund's extremely high dividend yield, the expense ratio is more or less negligible. And frankly, the only two covered call ETFs that have a lower expense ratio than others and still manage to provide a high dividend yield are JEPI and JEPQ. And JP Morgan is able to lower the expense ratio of their ETFs thanks to their scale and expertise. DJIA tracks the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index and uses a covered call strategy to provide long exposure to the stocks in the Dow. So similarly to the other Global X ETFs like XYLD and QYLD, DJIA sells at the money call options on each position in its holdings. And when you look at the holding breakdown of the ETF, you see that its asset allocation is exactly the same as the Dow. The fund currently has a dividend yield that is just under 10% and 9.39%, which is amazing. The dividends are distributed on a monthly basis and are non-qualified. Year to date, with dividends distributed, this ETF has actually managed to outperform the Dow Jones by around 2%. And just so you know, DIA is an ETF that tracks the Dow Jones index. And looking back to the inception date of this ETF, you can see that it lags a little behind the Dow by less than 3%, so not by much, but most importantly, it provides less volatility by softening both downward and upward volatility. And you can clearly see that with areas like right here, where the Dow drops 5% more than DJIA, and here where the Dow gains 5% more than DJIA. And as a result, the beta value of the CTF is at 0.54 in comparison to the beta of the Dow, which is at 0.94. And for those who don't know, a beta value that is less than one indicates that the stock or ETF exhibits less volatility than the overall market. A lot of you guys have been asking me where I get my data, research, and analysis from, and my number one go-to is Seeking Alpha. It is a wonderful platform with a plethora of daily articles and so many amazing tools to help you with your investment decisions. If you wanna explore the platform, you can find a link in the description down below for a 14-day free trial. So make sure you check it out. Let's move on.
Like I said before, covered call strategy that sell calls at the money will always fundamentally underperform the overall market. And that is simply because it is limiting any upside potential by capping its growth every single month in exchange for premium income. But what's really interesting is that based on the fund's performance thus far, it's actually been really close. This ETF is interestingly one of the very few ETFs that managed to match the returns of the underlying index that it tracks. It is also amongst the few ETFs that has been able to relatively replicate the returns of JEPI. And there are many companies within the Dow's holdings that are in JEPI's holdings, like Microsoft, United Health, American Express, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, etc. The difference is that JEPI holds around 130 stocks and the Dow only holds 30 stocks. And when you look at the sector breakdown of the Dow Jones compared to JEPI, you can see that both have major percentage of their holdings allocated towards healthcare, financials, and industrials. And these are all considered as stocks that exhibit value characteristics with low volatility. And if you look at Jeppy's fund description, it states that the ETF focuses on stocks within the S&P 500 that exhibit value characteristics with low volatility. So Jeppy's performance is actually heavily correlated with the Dow. And when you look at their charts side by side, almost all the movements of the Dow are replicated by Jeppy. If anything, they correlate almost perfectly. So JEPI has been a lot more effective in protecting people's investments compared to other covered call ETFs. And that is because its holdings and asset allocation is more closely correlated to the Dow Jones index rather than something like the NASDAQ 100. You see, as an investor, if you wanna capture the gains of a broad market, then the S&P 500 is your best bet. But if you want greater exposure to the tech sector, then the NASDAQ composite will be the better choice. But these indexes display high volatility because of their exposure to the growth sector, like technology stocks. However, if you're interested in a safe strategy that mirrors the price movements of well-established blue chip stocks with relatively less volatility, then the Dow is a good choice. You see, a covered call strategy on growth stocks is counterproductive. Although it may provide protection in a downward trend, more often than not, major growth stocks trend in an upward direction. So trading upward growth for premium income on growth stocks isn't ideal. But value stocks naturally have less volatility and don't tend to have major swings in stock price like growth stocks do. Their growth is rather gradual and consistent. So selling covered calls on these types of stocks can be a lot more beneficial and effective. So that is why DJIA and JEPI have relatively similar results. So clearly covered call ETFs that track the performance of stocks that exhibit value characteristics are a lot more effective at protecting your portfolio and still provide amazing returns. Okay, so here's an example so you can get a better idea. When comparing DJIA to the Dow year to date based on total returns, the results are relatively similar. DJIA actually outperforms by more than 1%. Now, if you look at XYLD, which is a covered call ETF that tracks the S&P 500, based on total returns year to date, XYLD underperforms the S&P 500 by 5%. And another example, when you look at QYLD, which sells covered calls against the QQQ, compared to the QQQ, again, you see that it heavily underperforms the index by around 20%. Each index in that order gradually exhibits more volatility, and the covered call ETFs that track these indexes gradually exhibit less returns with increasing drag on growth. So I just keep thinking if DJIA sold out of the money calls on the Dow rather than at the money calls, then it would be a much more effective ETF. And for those who don't know, selling out of the money covered calls allows a fund to appreciate in value rather than capping its growth completely with at the money covered calls. For example, if you sell out of the money covered calls that are two to 5% above the current price of the stock at the beginning of the month, with a one month to expiry, then you are allowing room for two to 5% capital appreciation in addition to premium income. And that is essentially what JEPI does. JEPI sells 5% out of the money covered calls on its holdings. But there's also another thing. You see, one of the main things that makes JEPI unique is that it only sells these covered calls on 20% of its holdings. So the fund is allowing even more room for it to appreciate. But the most important takeaway is that although you want a fund that will protect you in a downward trending market, 
you don't want it to lag behind significantly in a bull market. Selling at the money covered calls on indexes with a lot of volatility like the QQQ with major swings to the upside is not effective because more often than not, these indexes trend upwards and you simply don't want to miss out on that. Whereas the Dow tends to be less volatile than other major indexes because of its distinctive holdings and lack of exposure to medium and small cap companies, which tend to be more volatile. So overall, covered call ETFs tend to be a lot more effective when tracking stocks and indexes that are value oriented. And that is all for this video. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in my next one.